everyone. Hello. Welcome back to the Book Brood. Yep. We are here for our check-in number four. Number four on our romance reading challenge. So today it's going to be Divide and Conquer versus... Have to look it's Darkness one. Rising. Darkness Rises. There we rising. go. Rising. Okay. Darkness Rising. I knew it was dark something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So this is... Uh, the fourth book in the series for, you know, each. For each. Um, you want to go first? Or, I'm trying or to remember we where like... we were. So basically, we took almost two months off of this challenge. Right. It Cause... doesn't seem that way. Mm -hmm. um, because we had March Through History. Yes, and then the Owls. March and then Owls. Yeah. Um, I did one of them for the owls, but you didn't do any. No, so I am a book so. behind right now. I'm trying to catch back up. You can hear our kitten. <laughs> That's Cinder, our new kitten. Yes. We should have just named her Corona. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> um, how did you feel about book four? I... So I'm, I'm having trouble because I just finished book five, like, yesterday. And that's why I wanted so, to film so. before I went on to book right. five. Yeah. So book four, I think my overall feeling for book four is that it was, it was another one and it. It's basically my feelings on this too. But here it, we go again. <laughs> so it was, there was nothing like that all wrong with it, Uh huh. but I feel like this one did not like add much yeah and i have you know i can go into more detail of like just kind of themes i'm picking mm -hmm. up on on the story and stuff or just overall story so anyway what are your overall feelings? so that's divide and conquer divide and conquer yeah that's one of them that i i always forget i always get it mixed up there's uh was the Armed and Dangerous and Divide and Conquer are right yes. back to back. And I get those ones all confused and they kind of blur together to me. But, um, yeah. So I had similar feelings about this one. Um, it's another installment in a series that I would not be continuing if not for this challenge. But I was pleasantly surprised. This was the least cringeworthy and, like, the most enjoyable I guess I listened to this in one sitting um, it took me all day but I, I listened to it and um, I didn't fast forward through any parts of this one hey. which I think is a first for me like for most of the previous ones especially book two I fast forwarded through like the sexy scenes um, but no this one was not as bad. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> Did you want to go into detail first? Or? I yeah. Um. So I I was trying to figure out why this was less cringeworthy for me, um, specifically the love scenes, and I think that it's because their chemistry felt real and like, even though it happened over a short amount of time, there was enough on page dialogue back and forth. Um banter like it wasn't like instantly falling into bed it was mm -hmm. like happened over a course of however long book time is weird in this series i feel like but it felt long enough that they actually felt realistic and and not just like fated to be together. I mean, there was still definitely that, and, and mm -hmm. that is an issue that I have with this series, that everyone's, like, purposely pairing off, and it feels very, like, soul matey or, like, um, fated, you know, to be together or whatever. Um, I don't know. It just, it felt more natural. I That's guess. good. I'm glad, because uh, Etienne and Krista are my favorite couple from from the books, from the Mortal Guardian series. They're definitely, I liked, I liked their, their, their match. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely had my reservations. The very first page, the very first page is, uh, the, the female character 
stumbling around drunk and the ma male character's like, hey, she's hot. Like, if she wasn't so drunk, I would totally hit that. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> and like, you find out she's faking, but that doesn't matter. He didn't know. Like, that's your first thought of, oh my God, this woman is so drunk. She can't stand up straight or like string together a coherent cohesive sentence and your first thought is oh yeah it wasn't the fact she was drunk that he liked her that's mm -hmm. she's ridiculous sometimes that's he was just he was just Insta making an he was just making an observation it's not like he was speaking it out loud or anything well i had to he, hear it what? out loud okay <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, so the author made a choice there, and it was like he was speaking out loud. Um, specifically because this is a character who oftentimes shares thoughts. This is a telepathic character or whatever, and so there are many instances of thoughts being broadcast so other people can hear them. So it is basically like speaking out loud. But he wasn't at that at that time. He didn't send that thought to her. <laughs> it's insta-lust. And that is a thing that it has, has driven me crazy in previous books in this series. But it was mm -hmm. just at the beginning, I feel like, and it felt more natural towards the middle. Okay. Yeah. More cats are showing up in this book. Every single book, everyone has cat? cats. There were kittens in this one. There's a whole litter oh, of kittens. Oh, that's right. The kittens, yes. I <laughs> Lots of cats everywhere. Which is whatever. Who doesn't like cats? But it was just, like, it's such... There's so many, like, heavy-handed themes throughout that it's just... I don't know. Um, and one thing that did drive me crazy, there was a couple of cringe-worthy, like, gay joke moments in this one that I felt like were like I don't know when these were written and I'm not sure if this is just a like something that used to be more acceptable to like uh -huh. just like toxic mos ma masculinity of just like ribbing each other like uh -huh. oh, don't be gay you know that kind yeah. of thing but it just like nowadays doesn't really hold up right yeah I definitely agree there something about this one I can't quite put it into words, but it just feels like the author is attempting to like, like replenish some of her characters or like set up backups so that she can kill off certain characters. If that makes any sense, like um, we have some vampires that are set to become too crazy and have to be killed soon. So what happens in this one? Well, we get new vampires as like, you know, as backups, I see. you know, uh -huh. and then That's we've got like about. another healer is introduced here. So you're like, okay, was well, that because our one healer is going to like have to like, is it because he's so unreliable or is something going to happen to him or like what's going to happen there where like this new healer is going to step up and like take the place of that one. You know what I mean? Okay. It just feels a little bit like that. Mm-hmm. And Bastion is still my favorite. That's that's okay. Bastion is pretty cool. So those are my notes. There's there's no fault there. That's just fine. Even though he's less grumpy in this one because he's being tamed by his wife. Well, he's happily married now, so. So he's saying he's please <laughs> and having manners again. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's less choky and more please. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that that's upsetting you? <laughs> I mean, whatever. He's losing his charm. <laughs> no, who doesn't like a uh, Draco Malfoy character? <laughs> that's how I picture him. Oh, I see. Okay, that explains the blonde thing. Mm -hmm. then, uh, all right. Good. Okay, so divide and conquer. This book has to do with serial bombings and bank robberies happening in the city. That is it. Baltimore, where they are, or is it Washington D.C.? I think I it's so confusing. It's it's very confusing because they bounce what around a lot. City they're in, but there's these bombings happening, and they keep happening. These bank robberies keep happening, and and so apparently the whole city is starting to have these protests and everything. And at 
protesting the police not right. doing enough. Right. Protesting the police, and apparently that means the FBI as well. Mm-hmm. So that's the basis for this whole, or the, the setting of this whole book. So the, the plot was, I felt, was pretty weak in this mm-hmm. one. It was barely there, and the, the villains were so unsatisfyingly underdeveloped that yeah. it was really just like a paragraph at the end of the book that gave you any kind of like background on who these villains were and why they were doing what they were. And it was, it was an awful reason. <laughs> they needed a villain of the week, and that's what they came up with, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so that I had trouble with. Yeah. Um, and then another thing that I have noticed with all of the books, and I, I don't know if it's going to change or not, uh, is Ty is the focus of these books. He, He's the main character. he is the main character yeah. and he is the one that the authors and author love the most. In this this is book and, four. I think this is the last one with the, the, right. the two authors. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of the same way in book five and you know we'll we'll just see how it continues. But so Ty is one of the you know main uh, characters of the main couple. And so this focused so much on him, even to the point of a big thing in this book is that Zane, the other part, is blind and essentially sidelined through the entire book. And so this book, I feel like, was just all about expanding Ty more. His character. His character, what's, you know, what his history was like. Mm -hmm. It did... kind of barely poke at Zane's story and that Ty was like, well, do you want to let your family know that you were in an explosion and you're, you know, you've been blinded temporarily? And he's like, hey, I told my sister. That's, that was enough. Mm-hmm. And that was it. So another big thing with this one is Ty's recon buddies from back in the day were introduced. And that was a little too whirlwindy. It was four or five. It was very fast, wasn't it? Four or five characters that get introduced and they're in a bar and it gets just, oh, this is this person. They like beer. This is this person. They're, you know, of this descendants and um, he likes long walks on the beach. And, (laughs) you know, (laughs) yeah. And it just went around so quick and then. I couldn't keep track of the names when mm-hmm. they were talking, and sometimes they'd use the first name, sometimes they'd use the last name, and just okay. So, down. so like there was one named Owen, which I was like, "Who's Owen?" Like, but I don't it's know like, is that is. is is that someone's first name or last name? Well, it gets confusing it? because uh, they have a bunch of nicknames, mm-hmm. and and you'll you'll notice if you do read uh, the Sidewinder spinoff, um, specifically, that's mostly just Nick and Kelly. Mm-hmm. But every time they refer to the other one, they use a different nickname or name or whatever. Uh-huh. It's basically like showing these guys have spent, you know, so many years together. Yeah. They've got so many inside jokes and like mm-hmm. nicknames for each other. Yeah. And then there was, there was this brief point of a, an ex-girlfriend of Ty's that was just Oh, yeah. Inserted into the story, there's this cha- there's this uh, community event baseball game or whatever mm-hmm. that's going on that there was a bomb threat and so Zane ended up having to sit with the child of a Ty's ex girlfriend for it, it just felt so weird like it it was out of it seemed so out of place and like more just a reminder that that Ty's bisexual but then they both. I, it doesn't matter, like right? whatever. It it just seemed like I don't know. Maybe it, this maybe this book took a little while to to take off. Yeah. Yes. But I that, think you hit the nail on the head, though, is because the authors I think were trying to expand on Ty, mm-hmm. and so that's how you get all of this stuff. Like you meet his recon buddies, you meet an ex girlfriend, uh-huh. like yeah, you. It's a lot. Like, I can see your next note. Uh, oh, so this is more on 
the probably the thing I love the most about the, the 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 moment was so Ty has this Bronco that he's just so proud of and he's so mm -hmm. in love with it and the the bomb at the baseball game the robot they use to set it off it's you know robot arm goes flying and and lands right on his on his Bronco and he's like it's like his mother died and he so grieves, that, yeah yeah but I mean that's another. Right, and just more, to, about, just more about more about Ty. Yeah, yeah. So, it's. I mean, this one was it wasn't bad. It was mm -hmm. it was just another it was another link in the chain, I guess. But the. There there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough comedy for me in yeah. this one, and it got really sappy. Like, my favorite super sad my favorite so, scene in the whole series is in this book and it was I didn't find it all that touching I, so sweet. I don't know <laughs> but Zane's biggest thing in this book is that he's trying to tell Ty that that he loves him mm -hmm. but he doesn't know how because or he can't because he's still dealing with feelings he, it's it's hard for him to He's admit very, to be attached. Yeah. And you have said that you think that there was some tension between the two authors I on do. what to do. Specifically with, with Zane. Zane. Yeah. Absolutely. Because the author um, has come out later and said that she wants to go back and fix the first few. Um, because originally what they were going to have is they were going to have... Um, Ty actually die for real and then Zane was gonna commit suicide because his entire life was tied up with Ty mm. and that was the only reason he was still alive so Zane's his complete existence is exactly. just based on Ty <laughs> yeah so I mean but then obviously the author once it was just her series she went and changed it and gave Zane like a whole new uh, arc I guess or you know whatever shoots him off in his own like character development situation but it takes a while yeah yeah in which i i actually really enjoy the character of zane i think he makes a wonderful straight man to ties not so much silly man like he is the the silly one but he's more like the crazy one he is crazy <laughs> yeah legit and that's a theme that comes back a lot because um which one are you on now? Is it Stars and Stripes? Uh, Stars and Stripes. Yeah, so you'll nice you'll find that in that one too, where a character from Ty's past comes and like talks to Zane is like, "Oh, I've heard stories of that crazy, crazy person. Like, don't trust him." And that's an ongoing theme that you've read in several books so far. Is mm -hmm. everyone keeps coming back from Ty's past and telling Zane like, "Don't turn your back on him. Like, don't trust him. You know, like uh -huh. he is, like he'll throw you under the bus." It's an ongoing theme of like he's crazy yeah yeah <laughs> so that's that's about all I have again not not a bad book I enjoyed it enough but I it didn't have enough of the elements that I enjoyed more from the previous mm. ones like the the comedy the ribbing and, yeah. yeah I'm interested to see what you think of the next one because like I said, those the last two that you read kind of blur together in a mm -hmm. kind of a haze. Because so. um, yeah, the next one, you get to see more of Zane. You get to see Zane's family and uh -huh. they go to Texas. Yeah, so I, I am looking forward to that. Yeah. All right, so that <laughs> is our talk about... Darkness Rising. And Divide and Conquer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, I think we're going to... Get to book five and uh, start chugging on this series. That's gonna take us. Yeah, we'll try much and... long because it feels like so long since we did one of these. But yeah, even though it's gotten not got. Uh, I know. Even though it probably hasn't seemed that long to book two because we had some backlog, uh, but we are pretty much caught up now and uh, making new content as we post. Yeah. But we hope you stay with us. We hope you're enjoying this. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. And subscribe to our channel if you like our content. Bye, guys.